In this section, I'll be showing ways to add lighting quickly to storyboard elements, drawing simple shapes and adding in the idea of the direction of the lighting and the strength of the lighting, just using a couple of quick values. We can see in these images from Hans Bacher, the Balto storyboards, in the right side image of the runes, the lighting is clearly coming from the left. It's bright on the rubble in the lower left corner and fades across to the right leaving most of the debris in the foreground dark or in silhouette with rim lights or highlights. In the background then, we can see the lighting across the building, light on the left, dark on the right, where the sky is blown out, probably meaning smoke or dust in the air lit by fires. We can see this in many of the images. Dark foreground, strong light, in this case from the right, as shown by this brickwork in the lower left, and fading up in distance to this white blown out background. This shows up in almost every image except this top left, an establishing shot here, where we have white in the foreground, dust or haze, and rubble in the front of the buildings, which is dark. If we look over at the studies, and I'll zoom out so we can see them all, again we have the lighting evident pretty strongly in the boards. If we look at the figure ice skating, top center, we can see clearly the trees are in silhouette and the lighting is coming from the right. The figure is dark and in silhouette, there's a bare shadow to the left, and the light spills across very low and horizontal. In the right image, with the figure rowing the boat, we have the lighting possibly coming from the left leaving the figure in long shadow and silhouette with the tree shapes and foliage in dappled light and shadow. There's the strongest light with the figure walking through the columns. Clearly, he's in silhouette, he or she. The lighting beyond is blown out white, but very directional. We can see it across the column, shade from the roof. In Sketchbook Pro, I'm going to start out on a new layer. I've made one of my layers palette by pressing Control L. The values I'm going to use are just really the grays here on the right. And I'm going to bring in a story element as an example. For my story, called On Our Fingertips, Scene 1, Shot 1, the opening or establishing shot, we're going to show a city near sunset in a smoggy haze. We'll pan down to show the eco standing on a road outside of the city observing. So what this tells us is long low shadows, lots of things in silhouette, and the chance for strong side light or rim lights on a lot of the elements. To begin on this layer, I'm going to make some buildings. What I'll start out with is my pencil tool in a fairly dark color. Maybe not quite black. I like to reserve black for special cases. And I'll use some rectangles. Remember, we're going to make flat elements and elevate them in 3D and put them in perspective using a camera in 3ds Max or Maya. So I'm going to draw these pieces flat. I'll start out by drawing with my rectangle tool. And rather than just have one building, I'll add a little bit of complexity and draw the eye up by stacking some elements in so that it's really a building cluster I'm drawing. Now I'll fill this in with my paint bucket starting out with the darkest pieces. In this case, I'm going to draw dark forward. Borrowing from those Balto images, I'm going to make the darkest pieces most forward in the image and fade the buildings up in intensity as they stack back from this foreground to show off the haze in the scene, the smog. I'll go lighter for the next one and still lighter for one back there and finally even lighter for the far most. This shows depth in the scene, depth in my buildings. Now I can add in using whatever really tool I'd like. I'm going to use my chisel tip pen. I can add in a little bit of a rim light. I'll choose a light gray and click and drag on the brush properties until I have a very small brush. I'm going to drag down to about a five or so. And I'll switch over to the line tool. In this case, I want a little bit of a rim light on some of the buildings to show the lighting is coming from the right. I'll start at the top of the building and hold shift while I drag down to get a vertical line. I'll carry this line right across the top there 
and I'll repeat this on a lot of the right edges and top edges of my buildings. So that, yes, I do have dark lines crossing some of them, but I'm getting across the idea of top and side light on a lot of these elements, and we'll bring this out really nicely on that foreground building here. Good. So there's my building cluster, and I've started to get some lighting across in it. Now I'll work on some trees. I'll press Control L for a new layer. And on my layers palette, I can also hide layers if needed. I pick the background layer and choose the hide layer palette. And I'll do the same here on layer one. Now I have a clean slate. In this approach, the nice thing, you can draw right over other elements. As long as there's enough detail in there, enough data, so that things just don't pixelate completely, we can lay stuff in and stack it together and sort it out later rather than having to draw in perspective. I'm going to work on some tree shapes. I'll start out with just a regular marker or maybe just a brush and I'll click and drag on my brush making it fairly small and double click on the brush to bring up the brush properties. In this case what I'll do for the trees is I'll make sure that paint opacity is fairly high about 85 percent and choose a dark color. I'm going to do some trees in silhouette. It looks like I need to make sure I have another layer. So I can press Control L and in my layer editor make sure I have layer 2 selected which is visible. There we are. And now I'm ready to draw. I'll start out drawing some tree shapes in. Maybe I'll switch back over to my free line here and I'll start to draw in some trees and give them some direction. I'm going to say my trees are kind of windswept here, kind of scraggly looking. And they sort of come down to a bit of a, a V. And we don't want to make complete lollipops for trees. They can have a little drama to them. And then I'll just bring this down in the trunk and start to get a tree across. I'll get an extra branch or two up here and kind of sticking out. And there's the start of a tree. It doesn't have to be great looking. That's the big thing. It just has to be communicative of the idea of the tree. I'll go with a little bigger brush, add a few other elements in, and really start to suggest the lighting. Now finally on the tree, a little bit of light in there. Very, very small brush. Just barely kind of giving some little highlights in there. And if you don't like that approach, you can switch to an airbrush and brush in very gently some light. I'm going to use this style, these lines, to kind of suggest in the edges of leaves are lit. This is even more detail than Bacher goes, but this suggests in a tree in near silhouette. I'm ready to take these elements, make more, clone them, and use them in my city in the next lesson.